I'm of the belief that late night talk shows are absolutely atrocious. They're terrible. Every single one of them, all of them, they're bad. Nobody should watch them. I think everyone would be better off and more educated if they stopped watching these shows. Having said that though, there isn't a host nearly as terrible as him. Jimmy Fallon is the worst. Maybe James Corden, but he by far is the most insufferable in my opinion, not only because his annoying laugh gets on my nerves, but also because he's the biggest hack out there. He shills for the political establishment and he doesn't even care how pathetic he looks as he grovels at the feet of the powerful. He was helping Obama promote the Trans-Pacific Partnership and making jokes about how phenomenal the TPP would be. He was begging Chris Christie to give us any exciting details about his presidential campaign. This was back in 2015. He's just awful. And he showed everyone once again why he's the worst in a segment with John Oliver, where John Oliver dared to bring up Amazon's union-busting practices, and he shut it down like that. Now, unfortunately, I can't play the video for you because since this is on network television, it'll get copyright struck, uh, struck if, I, if I do that. So we're just going to listen to the audio. I think you can basically get the gist of what he's doing here. He's stopping criticism of Amazon. Speak from your heart, Alexa, your rotten heart. Oh my God. <laughs> this is clearly not a commercial for this. <laughs> oh, in which case, I've got another one. Alexa, Alexa, how bad are Amazon working conditions? <laughs> Alexa, stop. Sure. Alexa, stop. Here we go. All right, no, I have no, to. Alexa. I... No, Alexa. Alexa, no, what is No, no, Alexa, busting? this is me time now. <laughs> Alexa, stop. Yeah, oh, stop, please. Alexa, please listen to me. Doing Hey Robot. Of course. It was, um, I was going to say a pleasure, but, uh, but it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> I, I really hope, Jimmy, you yeah. didn't cut out my question about what, what, you, what union busting is. Wow. I've got to say, John Oliver, after I said all of that about late night hosts, John Oliver is probably the least offensive. He's not funny at all. But he's at least substantive. He actually does seem to care about the issues and have a grasp of issues that really affect working people. Uh, but that was just, that was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. And he probably doesn't necessarily want to be a shill for Amazon. He just wants to avoid controversy more generally speaking. But how pathetic are you, Jimmy Fallon? How pathetic do you have to be? to try to desperately shut down criticism of a company that is going out of its way to screw over their workers. Are you not embarrassed? Do you have no shame whatsoever? Maybe he's just genuinely stupid and he doesn't know about Amazon, but if he doesn't know about Amazon and what they're doing to their workers and how they're currently trying to stop an effort of Amazon workers in Best Summer, Alabama to unionize, let me explain to you just some of the reasons why people take issue with Amazon. As Vice reports, Amazon's working conditions are often described as dystopian for good reason. Come for the digital reward system straight out of Black Mirror that track worker productivity, stay for the mandatory graveyard shifts called mega cycles or lose your job. The company's success is no small part owed to its inhumane productivity quotas that create unsafe working conditions, which the company then turns around and offers to fix with surveillance, not to mention operations it already conducts to monitor workers' personal lives in the United States and Europe. The company may flaunt its $15 minimum wage for warehouse workers, but zoom out and you'll see Amazon is exploiting its monopoly and monopsony power to suppress wages in areas where it is one of the only major employers. When it comes to union busting, Amazon is king. It has only ever had two union elections, one in Delaware in 2014 and the one currently ongoing in Bessemer, Alabama. That's because Amazon is religiously committed to busting unions whenever the threat appears, whether that means it illegally firing workers in retaliation for organizing, breaking the rules of companies it owns to spread anti-union propaganda, hiring people solely to walk around warehouses wearing vote no buttons, kindly reminding warehouse workers to vote no while it watches them, and creating a website for workers to visit to learn why Amazon's exploitation is preferable to collective bargaining rights. That's what you're protecting, Jimmy Fallon. That is what you were just shilling for, wittingly or unwittingly. You were stopping criticism of a company whose recklessness has led to their workers not only being exploited, but in some cases, killed. 
Status Coup's Jordan Sheridan broke the story about how one Amazon warehouse worker died due to COVID-19, presumably because she was testing employees for COVID, but she didn't have any of the proper PPE to conduct said tests safely. Amazon was too cheap to hire a third party of professionals who actually knew what they were doing, so they forced their employees to test others for COVID, didn't give them masks or any of the proper equipment, and one died. How many more people have to die? How many more people have to piss in bottles before it gets you to actually take it seriously, Jimmy Fallon? And look, he doesn't care because he's a multimillionaire. He gets to talk for a living on television and uh, interview celebrities. So he, he couldn't care less about any of this. But at least when valid criticism is brought up, the bare minimum that you can do if you are just not a piece of shit is not shut it down so quickly and desperately as you did. Embarrassing. Stop watching Jimmy Fallon. If you're watching Jimmy Fallon, stop watching Jimmy Fallon. For the love of God, he's trash. And James Corden, too. I don't know what he stands for politically, but he is super obnoxious. And all of these late night hosts are just smug assholes and they're hacks. And at what point do we just stop worshiping late night comedians? They're not funny. They provide nothing of substance or value to society. Stop watching them and maybe they'll all go away. Beta male, not a beta male.